Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Food and the Single Guy here on the YT with me, your very own Amaru. We are entering season 11 of my web show, my web series, my cooking program, my cooking show, whatever the heck you want to call it. I have been doing this since 2009. This is the season premiere of season 11 of Food and the Single Guy, and I'm very happy about it. I mean, I could have quit a long time ago, but you know, I love doing these videos and I love the internet action that I have with all of you, including the ones that don't agree with me, including the ones that tell me you talk too much. But baby, strap yourselves in because today I'm going to talk a lot yet again, whether you like it or not, because I have to. You know, when I give you the backstory on dishes from my country, it is for a reason. All of these dishes are part of my cultural heritage. And I think that it's my obligation to preserve my cultural heritage. Unlike a lot of people who just put together a couple of ingredients and call that cooking, I cannot do that. I have to give you the backstory, especially when I cook something from the homeland. And this one right here is called carboyo. It is spelled Karu boyo, but because in my native Creole language we contract the words, we say carboyo. Of course, I'm gonna spell it the correct way for you in the title, okay? Now, I'm gonna say it. This is not the authentic, this is not the original way of making this dish, okay? Because back in the day, people would grate the corn, collect the pulp, and then add the rest of the ingredients to the pulp. As time progressed, people started to use dehydrated corn, which you had to soak overnight in water. You had to bring it to a boil and then mash it until it was nice and soft. You had to turn it into a nice, you know, pulp paste, if you will, and then add the rest of the ingredients. The only difference um, with the authentic recipe and my recipe that I'm going to show you today is uh, the fact that I'm going to use cornmeal instead. In essence, it is just the same. Now, you need to remember that this is a cake that has to be cooked on the stove top first, and then you have to continue cooking it in the oven. A lot of people just pour the stuff into a baking dish and then pop it into the oven and call it a day. That is not how it's done. All right? All right, I'm sure some of you remember the pictures that I posted on the community page a couple of months ago in which I show you that I attempted to make this dish the authentic way and it backfired. My very expensive potato masher that my mom got me for my birthday broke halfway into the mashing of the corn. And then I said, you know what? I'm gonna put this in the blender and then I'm gonna blitz it. Uh, next thing I know, my blender exploded. Baby, let me tell you, I was fit to be tied. I said, you know what? I will never attempt to make this dish again. But a lot of you have requested it, and so here I am. Anyways, you guys, enough with the talking. Let us move on to the baking. Okay, you guys, let's have a look at the ingredients for this cake. Over here, we have the cornmeal, the powdered milk, the all-purpose flour, the vanilla extract, the cinnamon powder, the rum extract, the cinnamon sticks, the vanilla sugar, the sugar sprinkles, the candied cherries, the rum-soaked raisins, and the coconut milk. Okay guys, so next we're gonna continue with the dry ingredients. To my bowl, I'm gonna add three cups of the cornmeal. To the cornmeal, I'm gonna add half a cup of flour. And you can probably hear my stove in the background because I'm also bringing to a boil six cups of water. Next, I'm gonna add half a cup of milk powder. We're also gonna add about a teaspoon and a half of salt and we're also going to add about half a teaspoon of nutmeg and we're also going to add about a teaspoon of cinnamon powder now we're going to give this a good mix so this is looking good let's move on to the stove all right you guys my water has been boiling to the water i'm going to add three cinnamon sticks i'm going to add two cups of sugar one Two, we're gonna give it a quick stir. We're also gonna add the rum soaked raisins. And we're also gonna add about half a cup of butter. So we're gonna give this a good stir. 
So we're gonna allow this to simmer on medium high and then we're gonna continue working on the batter. Okay, you guys, so I had been talking and talking and talking away, not realizing that the camera was not recording. But to the cornmeal, I added about six and a half cups of coconut milk. I added two sachets of vanilla sugar. I added one teaspoon of vanilla extract and two teaspoons of rum aroma. And of course, I gave it a good stir. Just like this. And next what we're going to do, we are going to pour this batter into our pot. And in the meantime, you want to start preheating your oven. Oh my, look at all that goodness. So let us pour the cornmeal batter into the pot. And of course, we're not wasting anything. Make sure to get your spatula and scrape it all out. My late grandfather would always say, waste not, want not. So next, you're going to stir this continuously until it thickens. See, it is starting to thicken. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my whisk. Here we go. It's very thick, you guys. So this may be a workout. And the goal is to end up with a batter that is lump free. So this is looking good. We are now going to remove the cinnamon sticks and we're gonna pour the batter into a lightly greased baking pan. Okay, you guys, here we go. Here we go. And of course, we're gonna scrape it all out. Oh yes. Look at how much there is still left in my pot. Honey, we're not wasting anything around here. There we go. Doesn't that look beautiful? Oh, honey, it does. And it smells delicious, you guys. Ugh. Okay, you guys, so next we're gonna put this bad boy in the oven and we're gonna bake this for about an hour at about 180 degrees C. Okay, you guys, the cake is done. And this is what it looks like fresh out of the oven. We're going to allow this to cool down completely before we cut into it. But I will sprinkle some of these very festive sprinkles on top while it is still hot. Here we go. And traditionally, they would also sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top. Just like this. Just a dusting, you guys. Don't go crazy with it. Okay, you guys, and now for the final presentation. I am going to dust my serving platter with some icing sugar. Just like this. Fancy schmancy. Oh, yes. You know me. And I always tell you, presentation is everything. So now we're going to remove the star very gently. There we go. So let us place the cake on the platter and we're going to garnish with some of those candy cherries just like that. Doesn't that look festive? Oh, but it does. And for good measure, we're going to add a little bit more of these festive sprinkles. There we go. Oh, baby, this is looking festive like a mobo. Right? Oh, yes, it does. Mm. And there you have it, you guys, the finished product. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Now, let me tell you something. I don't have a sweet tooth, but I can tell you that it was delicious. And I shared this with two of my friends, two of my neighbors, and my mom. Now, you guys, I know for a fact that wherever you live on planet Earth, you will be able to find all of these ingredients. So if you decide to try this cake, let me know how it turned out, because I'm always interested in hearing from you. In the meantime, do be well take care happy cooking happy eating yet again welcome to the season premiere of season 11 of my food and a single guy don't add crazy to the craziness and I will see you when I see you have a good one you guys bye